Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the first chapter of Mark, verses 1 to 8. John prepares the, ba the, the Baptist way. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. And me, after me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of those whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And this ends the reading for today. So this week we move into our second week of Advent, and this is the week where we discuss peace. And as I thought about peace this week, something came into my mind, and it, it is this. Is there anything that is as universally sought after than peace? Anything more universally sought after than peace? I don't, I don't think there is. See, when you think about it, nearly every person that you meet would tell you that they would want peace in their lives and peace in this world. What does Miss America say when she is asked if she could have anything in the world? Well, I would love to have world peace, right? That's the answer that, they, that they've been taught to give. Now, hopefully they believe it, but, you know, it's what they say. What do we pray for each, each week when we look at the violence going, all over the, going on all over this world? And we did it today, right? We pray for peace. What did a whole generation of people try to achieve in the 60s and 70s? Peace, right? It's so prevalent, we have a hand signal for it, right? I can go like this and you know that I'm saying peace, right? What did your mom say to you when you were a kid and you were driving her up the wall all day. Can you just give me a moment of peace? Why do we go on vacation? We're trying to get some peace, right? Why do I go out and sit in the woods when it's freezing for hours on end? Just to find a bit of peace. Now, maybe I get lucky and a deer comes by, but it's more about finding a sense of peace. So it seems that everyone you know, everyone you meet is looking for some kind of peace in this world. And if that is the case, if we're all looking for peace in this world, then why does it seem so hard to find it? How can something that we are all looking for and hoping for and praying for be so hard to make happen? See, I'm not sure that we as an entire human race have had total peace on earth at one time since Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden. Right now, if we were to look around the world, there are countless wars and conflicts happening. You know, we, we are focused very much on two that are happening in our world right now, right in the Ukraine and in Israel, but there are other conflicts going on all over the world. And we see daily news reports of violence in our own little community. And we ask ourselves, why can't there just be peace? Well, when we think about peace, I believe there are two types of peace that we are looking for in this world. It can be broken down into inner peace and outer peace. See, inner peace is what we are searching for when we look for peace in our own lives trying to find a sense uh, uh, of being okay, of contentment 
with all the things that go on in our lives. An outer peace is what we're looking for in the world. You can think of that as just world peace, to say it in an easy way. Now, inner peace is something that we as people seem to really, really want. There are whole areas of our economy dedicated to helping people find and seek inner peace. When you think about it, right? We have whole sections of bookstores and libraries, <coughs> excuse me, that are dedicated to finding inner peace, right? To finding self-help, to help you find inner peace. We have gurus on the TV telling us what we need to do to find inner peace. We have meditation and yoga classes and pharmaceuticals and all sorts of other things. When you get down to the core of it, they are trying to sell us on how they have found the key to inner peace. Now, I'm not going to knock those things. If they help you or they help someone else find a more peaceful way of living, a, more, uh, a greater inner peace in your life, that's a good thing, right? There's no, no argument there. But I do believe that true inner peace comes from trusting in Jesus and his promises. You see, for me, because I am sure of my salvation in Jesus Christ, there is nothing that can disturb my inner peace unless I let it. See, I know there is nothing that Jesus hasn't already overcome, and I know that he is with me in all things, and because of that, I find my inner peace in him. But inner peace can be tricky, right? It's not a constant. It doesn't always uh, sit easy in your lives. And I'm no different, right? We all have worries from time to time. There are things that pop up that disturb our inner peace. But if we can stay focused on Jesus, I do believe we can come back to finding that inner peace. So that is the key to inner peace. Outer peace or world peace is not quite that easy. See, I believe our outer peace begins with our inner peace. And since we know that not everyone has the same inner peace that we can have as Christians, it becomes difficult to have world peace. So if this is such a difficult thing to achieve, what are we to do? Are we just simply say, oh well, I guess there'll never be peace on earth. No, that is not what we are to do. In our scripture for today, we find the story of John the Baptist. And we are told about how he goes before Jesus and prepares the way for his coming. Well, I believe that we are to take up that mantle as well. See, just as John prepared the way for Jesus to come, I believe it is our duty as Christians to prepare the way for him to come again. So how are we to do that? Well, we do it by simply telling others about him. And even more importantly, we do it by showing others the way that we choose to live a life of peace. You see, if we want peace in this world, it begins with us. It begins in the way that we show others the peace that Jesus has given to us. So why does it have to be that way? Why, why can't we just expect others in this world to be seeking peace in the same way that we should be? Doesn't it make you mad when people don't seek peace? Well, for me personally, while it might make me upset, I'm not surprised when they do not. When people outside of the faith are not seeking peace, it doesn't surprise me. However, when people inside of the faith are not seeking peace, that is both surprising and upsetting. Think of it this way. If a little kid came over to your house and they decided, hey, I should take this toy, I should flush it down the toilet so that I can see what happens. Now, you might be a little bit upset by it, but you probably wouldn't be overly surprised, right? 
They're just a little kid. They're curious. They didn't mean to destroy the bathroom by flooding it. That wasn't their intent. They just wanted to see what happens when you put this toy in the toilet and try to flush it. Now, if I came over to your house and I took a toy and I flushed it down the toilet, you would probably be upset and surprised, right? I should know better, right? I should know that that's going to destroy the bathroom. I shouldn't be doing that sort of thing. Well, that's the way that I feel when Christians don't choose to seek peace in this world. See, we should know better, right? We know that we are to seek peace in this world. But it's not always an easy thing to do. You see, when it comes to this world and it comes to seeking peace, it seems as if the world around us wants us to do anything but seek peace. See, when, the world, when something goes wrong or someone wrongs us in this world, what are we told by the world? We are told to seek revenge. When we are angry, what are we to do? We are to lash out in hatred. And above all things, this world will tell you to seek your best interest, no matter the cost. See, that is why it is so hard for us to have peace in this world. Everything that the world is trying to sell us points us in the opposite direction of peace. But what does Jesus tell us in those things? When someone wrongs us, what are we to do? Turn the other cheek and forgive them. When we are angry with someone, are we to lash out in hatred for them? No, we are to pray for our enemies. Should we put our own agenda above all other things? Is that what Jesus tells us to do? No, he tells us there is no greater love than someone that is willing to lay down their own life for their friends. The complete opposite of selfishness, right? You see, that is the message that we are not only to take to the world, but even more importantly, the message we are to show to the world. So if we want peace in this world, and as I said earlier, it seems as if everybody wants peace in this world, and I hope that you are among that everybody, we have to make sure that we are showing others the way to peace the way that Jesus has already shown us. My challenge for you this week is this. Do your best this week. You know what? Do your best every week to show others the peace that is found in Jesus. Amen.